Hey, what's up guys, it's T-Bone here. Welcome to another episode of playing Legend of Solgard. So what I want to do in today's episode is talk about this team that is really effective against the first level in the boss arena against Nidhogg. Now, boss arena is a weekly event. It happens on Tuesdays to Thursdays. And with this team, I was able to actually go through it in one shot last week. Unfortunately, I didn't record it, so I did it again this time. And we're going to go through the mechanics of this team. So let's talk about the boss here. This is actually the same boss that you face in level 40 of the campaign. And you have seven columns of creatures to try and defeat, except the health of the boss is a lot higher, starts at 650. So barriers is the way to go here. And while all creatures can create barriers if you match them three across, you want to actually take advantage of the blocking ability of, this, of these creatures as well. And that's why Red Guard and also Knobark are very good here. So they both create create uh, barriers when you match them and so you can double up on the effect and also you can use not bark as a way to block as you see here now uh, the boss would actually attack in the column where you can see the basically line up the nose and once it once the timer goes down to zero it will actually traverse to right and left you can see the arrow that tells you where it goes and about every three turns or so it will stop and basically charge up for three turns where you see the number that's up there will be the total amount of damage it will de deal to you regardless of what barriers you've put in place and so within those three turns it's very critical for you to actually take it down to zero you won't actually deal any damage to the boss during this time but the goal is to knock it down to zero so you can reset once reset, you'll see that the boss will continue to traverse in the direction as indicated by the arrow. And so during this time, what you want to do is you want to try to create as as much of the barrier as you can and also make sure that there are enough creatures in the same column where the boss is going to attack so that you could uh, minimize the amount of damage. And so you can see here now we have three turns again to take down 41 health of the boss. And so there's a couple of things that you could do. So Red Guard, I haven't had a chance to talk about him uh, very much. He's a very good and versatile card to use because when you match them you'll see that the barrier creates also basically is like a thorny uh, barrier where you also attack and all three of the barriers that it creates will attack uh, two spaces which is just enough to, to damage uh, the boss here and so at this point there is still 17 uh, there's still 17 damage that the boss is about to deal. I have two moves remaining to try and take it out. And so using the Sun Spear, take it down as much as you can. And I got really lucky here in that my Tusker was able to deal a critical damage. And so if I didn't happen, then I would have taken damage from the boss there. But uh, so moving on, you can see the strategy here is to continue to use Nobark and also uh, Red Guard as much as I can to keep building up the, the barriers. One of the nice things about Not Bark is when it attacks, it will also add more, it will add the strength to your barrier as well, so it makes it stronger. And so continue continue to build up the barriers as much as you can. And what I'm using Tusker and also uh, um, Dazzle Pot for are to get quick damage they have a zero turn hold that means as soon as you match them they will attack so it's really useful during the during the time when uh, the boss is charging up ready to attack and so here you know basically the the strategy remains the same so that you want to sort of balance between quick damages and also protection so you can see here if you don't have enough barrier strength you are going to get attacked and it doesn't take very long for you to lose all of your health and the goal here obviously is if you want to minimize the number of attacks you want to damage the boss as often as you can there is no turn limit here and so as long as you can stay alive the more chances you'll be able to deal higher damage there and so once again we are now at the point where the boss is ready getting ready to charge up and so the couple of options i have here the way i'm the, the sort of my thought process usually is when i when i when i uh, match up Tusker, it also creates additional strength to all of the small creatures around it so that when you actually match them, uh, merge them later, their attack will be higher. And so I can use that as a an opportunity to take down the, the health of the boss quicker or the charge amount. 
so that I can reset it to, to 14 again. As soon as it goes off of that charge, it has one turn. So you have one free turn to try and save up here. And you can see here, my barriers are now doing pretty well. They're in the 13s to 16s range, but some of them are still low between seven and eight. And so just continue to try and look for opportunities to create if possible. And sometimes it's not gonna be very, you know, sometimes you're not gonna get the kind of uh, draws that you're gonna see. So in this case right here, um, I'm, I'm, I have basically one of the columns has no barriers, the other one has 11. And so what I'm doing here is I'm sacrificing a barrier and I'm just using creatures to then try to, to block it at the point. Even though I have 27 here, that really is just a couple of hits, uh, you know, and, and that's all it takes for me to, to lose uh, the match here. And so really sort of using my combination of quick attacks and also protection, that's the, that's the, um, the best way to go about it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead here and we're going to look at what happened near the end of this fight. So here I was able to bring the boss's health down to 323, which is about less than half at this point. And this is where I wanted to talk about some of the mistakes I've made. And so here we are, the boss is now charging up with 41 uh, attack at this point. And what I should have done at this point, if you notice, I have two red cards there. I should have matched them right away. Instead, I decided to summon more creatures and that didn't end up working well for me. And so I am left with a very bad sort of a situation where I don't have my creatures lined up so I can do attack and there's 22 damage that the boss is still ready to deal and I was only able to bring it down to 17. And if I didn't I would actually lose right there and you can see that the boss at this point dealt 17 direct damage to me and I'm down to 4 health. Now the problem here is I don't have enough barrier either. It destroyed all of my barriers and I needed to have at least 14 or have a creature that can block in order to survive there, but it didn't and unfortunately I lost my fight immediately. So with this first fight, I was able to take it down to 50, under 50%. My second fight didn't do quite as well. I still took it down by 267, so there's only 31 health remaining. Now there's always three keys to start. So you have three keys that you can, you, you get more, it, it will actually reset every eight hours or four hours or so, but I wanted to minimize the number of attacks. So with the two attacks out of the way, the boss is now just down to 31, and this is actually relatively easy. So with in this case, I have 36 health here. I'm not really concerned. I just want to make sure that I can get some attacks there. And so one, one of the things I'm thinking about, I'm always looking for a way to get big creatures. And I like having the big uh, Dazzlepot creature there because he does actually deal some good damage there. And so at this point, all I have to do is make sure that I get him to attack. And with the combined Dazzlepot and Notbark, as well as the Red Guard attacking, I'm able to take down the first level pretty easily within three keys. I'm always looking to optimize even more, try to finish it in one attack. So we'll continue to improve on that. Got some pretty good rewards there. I got two epic uh, gems for Witherwild. There is a chance for legendary as well, but I never got that yet. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks a lot for watching. So I really like this team that I just showcased today. I think it works really well for the boss arena. And in the next episode, we're going to cover Rungner in our quest to complete all three bosses with as, as few keys as possible. So give this a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know how it works out. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.